Hi there, we're here at MEF 19 with Andrew Duggan, who is um, a board member of the MEF and also uh, hails from CenturyLink. Yes. And I'm going to ask uh, Andrew a couple of questions about uh, what we're doing here at MEF 19 and, uh, and what's really some of the hot issues are right now. Um, firstly, what is um, MEF and, and uh, some of the standards that we're seeing around LSO, what are they buying for the carriers and for century? How are you benefiting and how are some of your um, carrier uh, friends uh, benefiting as well? Well, so we're benefiting in that they enable automation. And they enable automation within a carrier, but they also enable automation between carriers. And at CenturyLink, we believe that automation is key to the future of our services. Our customers want to be able to manage their own services, turn up, turn down services on demand, and having standardized interfaces help enable that. Um, you know, and a carrier's network like CenturyLink doesn't go everywhere. We depend on other carriers to get to some of our customer locations. Uh, and you, the LSO APIs help carriers communicate with each other and automate between each other in a standard way to enable us to order services from somebody else and for those other carriers to order services for, uh, from us. So it's really important for what we think the future of automation is for carriers. So it makes it a lot more simple for enterprises to order services that are across the country or across nations and certainly across carriers. Um, rather than negotiating with everybody, they're just negotiating with you, is that right? Right. And, and it's on demand. You can turn up services or manage your services within minutes and not have to go through the normal 30, 60, 90 day intervals to order traditional telecom services. Right. Excellent. And that, that for me is the real power. That's what customers want. Mm -hmm. Their networking needs are becoming more dynamic and having APIs like LSO um, helps enable that. So the network has to become more dynamic along with the, Absolutely. With, with the customer demands. Absolutely. So one of the things we see happening with uh, customers is the cloud is moving further to the edge. We see compute storage um, requirements being pushed to the edge, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for applications that might be demanding lower latency mm -hmm. and therefore have a lot of local compute. Um, is this something that, uh, that CenturyLink is seeing and, and how would MEF uh, help in that situation? Yeah, so it, that is a conversation we're having more and more with our enterprise customers. They're, they've got applications like robotic control mm -hmm. or augmented uh, virtual reality where the latency between the user of that application and the application has to be very low. Um, they can't tolerate the sort of latencies of going to a centralized cloud, so that is forcing that is distribution that you talk about. Mm -hmm. And you, that distribution is happening in three places. One is on the customer premise. The other one is at the network edge, so maybe a millisecond to five milliseconds away from the customer mm -hmm. premise. And then there are certainly still applications that are well suited for the centralized cloud. So enterprises are creating these applications that run in one of those three places. Premise edge, network edge, centralized cloud. That's a dynamic environment for them where they can turn up and turn down applications like a normal cloud application. And having the ability to move applications and manage applications across those three locations is great for them. But without the dynamic network connecting all that together, uh, it's, it becomes slow and it becomes traditional telecom again. You've got to be able to turn up an application at the network edge and then connect that to a centralized cloud or connect it to the premise. And LSO APIs are, again, another way to help with that automation. To, to speed that up so speed the network up. is as flexible as the overlay um, orchestration That's uh, right. layer as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. It gets integrated. For us, it gets integrated with the application orchestration. When the application moves, the network moves. Yep. When the application scales, the network scales. Excellent. So as the data center becomes anywhere, it yes. can be under your desk, it can be at the edge, it can be um, an aggregation point, it can be wherever. That's right, that's right. It becomes necessary to uh, We like to say the, net this. the network is the data center. The network is the data center, <laughs> that's right. So it's no longer centralized, or it won't be. Yep, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
let's let's shift the conversation a little bit to SD WAN because okay. I know that's a that's a hot topic at the at MEF nineteen in general and for you all in 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 specific. Um, how is it maturing? Has it matured much as a as a service? And what are some of the the um, aspects that we're seeing emerging here at MEF nineteen? And what do we still need to work on to make it a, 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 a more, an even more flexible and universal yeah. service? Yeah, I would say that SD WAN has matured. Um, you know, if you go back two years ago for us, as we start to offer the service, or even three years ago, you, the variability that we get on customer requirements and customer configurations created a lot of complexity operationally. And as we've progressed over the last three years, we're starting to see more standardization in the way that we turn up customers, the way that we manage customers, which in the end creates a better, more stable service, more manageable service for, our, for the end customer. So that, that's the evolution that we've seen. Um, we're getting more comfortable managing those standard configurations. And where MEF comes in is it's helping to define the standards for SD-WAN. What does the standard SD-WAN offer look like? And that will help even further stabilize and standardize how these services are offered in the industry. So we're, we're looking forward to that. So is starting with just standardizing the language that we use, and yes. the definitions That's right. that we use. That's right. Um, excellent. Yeah. That's right. Um, so why is it a, a significant deal that MEF uh, took the step of defining those service uh, capabilities and, and characteristics? Um, it, be, because of that complexity, um, because it's a relatively new service and helping enterprise customers understand what is SD-WAN, what are the attributes of an SD-WAN service, what are the ways that you can manage and configure those attributes creates that standardization which creates more operational efficiency for carriers like us um, and ultimately produces that more stable service for customers. So it's, so it's opening up the market a little bit for folks like CenturyLink when you're able to more seamlessly uh, offer an end-to-end -end service that, tr that uh, goes across your network and then also other carrier networks. That is right. Offer that more seamlessly. That is right. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Very interesting. Andrew, are there cloud providers that are adopting MEFs APIs uh, to help the carriers uh, enable more services across multiple networks? What is the cloud provider reaction to all this? Yeah, that's one of the topics that we discuss as a part of the MEF board uh, quite frequently. We would like the cloud providers to adopt the LSO APIs. Uh, not many of them have today. We're in conversation with them, but we'd like to see uh, more broad adoption by them. The way that it works with cloud providers today is every cloud provider has their own API. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been doing this longer than most in terms of automation of infrastructure. So they've built their own and they're all different. So what happens is a carrier like CenturyLink has to integrate with every cloud provider's APIs, which creates complexity for us um, and uh, a lot of work to sort of keep up with the development of their APIs. Absolutely. So that's suboptimal for us. We'd like to see a standard interface into the cloud for connecting into the cloud. Um, I think the cloud providers will ultimately come around and adopt. You do. Yes, I do. Because today, when one of our customers wants to connect to the cloud, they come to the CenturyLink portal mm -hmm. um, and they configure a connection into the cloud on demand. If the cloud providers want to do that in the opposite direction, be able to consume services of carriers, then they're going to have to reach into our networks through APIs. And they're going to want to do that, I believe, in a standard way. And the LSO APIs are a way for them to do that. Otherwise, they'll be forced to integrate with with us individually too. Right. And if we're all implementing the LSO APIs, they will ultimately implement them as well. So about how, how long will we have to wait to see that type of integration uh -huh. or that type of uh, joining in on the part of the cloud providers? Yeah, I'm not aware that they're working not on it today. But I would think it's gotta happen, if not in 2020, it's gotta happen I think in 2021. Yeah. Sounds reasonable, 18 months, 24 months. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, are you running the same situation with other carriers as well? 
um, how much enthusiasm do you see behind uh, the LSO standards? It's, it's gaining traction, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that we talk about at the board meetings, which is the adoption. And what carriers are in active conversations about implementation and which carriers are exploring implementation. And we have a, a pretty good funnel of carriers that are, are, are interested and a number that are actively implementing. I would say 2019 was the year where a handful of carriers implemented some uh, early uh, instances of mm -hmm. the APIs. Mm -hmm. I say 2020 is when we will start to really get some traction and by 2021, 2022, I think it will be widely adopted. All right, very interesting. And you think that there will be pretty much widespread acceptance on the part of the carriers for the LSO standards coming out of them? I do, because you know, there's not really another uh, group that's addressing What's this, the this same problem. Mm -hmm. And if carriers aren't automating delivery of services in the next two to three years, they'll be left behind. Absolutely. And so so I, th I think they're going to have to. There are very few enterprises that need services within a carrier region right. only. That's right. Yeah, everybody needs to uh, go outside. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you.